Hello, and thanks for being here. This asset has gone quite complex, so let's go through it piece by piece. Let's talk about the main mechanics of this template one by one. If we go to settings, project settings, and let's check the maps and modes, we see we're using a custom game mode. And if we scroll down, we see we're using a custom game instance class. If we go to blueprints call, we find uh, a bunch of different actors. What we want to talk about right now is the game mode, the game instance, and the game controller. Let's start with the game instance. As you might know, um, value set in the game instance persists during level change. So that's why the game instance of this template is taking care of loading the game and transitioning between levels, streaming levels in and out. So you can use these functions from everywhere to control the level streaming and loading of levels. So that's basically what it does. We're saving and loading user settings and these things. The game instance is set under settings, project settings, maps and modes. And if you scroll down the list, there you go. So if you migrate this asset into your already existing project, you need to set up the game instance class to match the BP story adventure game instance. Next, we would have the game mode. The game mode usually is commonly used to, to handle the game rules and main mechanics. Also, the game mode controls which pawn or controller classes are used. Uh, in addition to that, we're using a custom class uh, to call functions used to control game settings and input device changes. There's also another game mode actor we're using for the game menu, which is basically just the same inheriting from the game mode, but uh, we're using an, another pawn class because we don't want to, to use our game player pawn inside the menu. As you can see, the game mode spawns the game controller on begin play, so we don't have to place the game controller in our level manually. The game mode for the menu doesn't do that because we don't need the game controller in the menu. Let's continue with the game controller. This actor is very important for this template because it's controlling its uh, interaction system and handles various mechanics such as the in-game menu, the player backpack, and updating the active input device. Let's talk about the other actors that we have here. Let's start with the menu pawn. The menu pawn is basically just the pawn class that we're using for a menu to control the user interface that we have. We start by showing the menu widget, adding it to screen, and then we just handle all the input and pass it to the widget. There's a lot of communication happening in this template. We're using interfaces for the sake most of the time. The BP interaction interface is used to fetch information from interactive actors as well as for the actual interaction. To keep all widgets up to date, we're using an interface called BP Widget Interface. The functionality of both should explain itself if you open it up and if you search for these functions. If you're not familiar with interfaces, um, I would suggest having a look at how interfaces work in Unreal Engine before you start digging deeper inside of this template and this interface functions. Beside that, we have a function library, which is called BP Story Adventure Function Library. This function library contains multiple helper functions used in a lot of different actors in this template. It's often used to get a reference to a specific controlling actor and can also be used to toggle the widget visibility. I recommend not to add custom functions to this library so you'll be safe to just override the whole asset on a future update. Okay, let's continue with the player character. Besides general camera settings, the player character inside this template contains functions for adjusting focal depth of the camera, player movement, head rotation, and hand target location for picking up items using an IK chain. Of course, you can still use your own character. You don't have to stick with this one. To keep the functionality provided with this template, it's recommended to create a new actor based on BP Story Adventure character or reparent your existing character to this actor. This way, you would keep your changes even after updating the parent class after a future template update. In addition to that, you need to set up the animation blueprint for your new character mesh. If the skeleton is the same, you could simply retarget the integrated one and it'll be fine. If the skeleton is different, it is of course still possible to retarget, however, you need to remove the animations from it and replace them with your own ones. As you can see, there's not much happening in the animation blueprint, so it should be quite easy to bring it over to your own animation blueprint if you already have one and you don't want to retarget. You see that we just have the basic things. We set up the speed. Um, and then we set the head rotation, as you might have noticed that the character is always facing in the direction the camera is looking at. And also we have the right target, the right hand target location, which is used for the IK chain. Um, additionally, we have the footstep effects. So we're using an animation notify for step left and step right. And these notifies would then play the footstep effect. 
for the foot step effects to work, we need to add the socket names for the left foot and the right foot to know at which location we have to play the sound and the effect. It's not very important for the sound, but we would need to have that for an effect like the dust or, or water splashes or something the like. Uh, you can basically just add this to that function if you like. Also, as we already hear, let's talk about adding new surfaces and specific sounds for these. You can see here that we're playing a sound and this sound will be selected depending on which surface we hit. The surface hit is based on the line trace, so we set the surface. And if you add surfaces to your project, you can then refresh this node if you don't have the, the surfaces added to this. You might need to restart the engine after uh, adding a surface. All right, let's now talk about one of the core systems of this template, the interaction system. The interaction system of this template is based on a four action system, meaning players always have up to four possible interactions per interactive item. You can assign an interaction to one of the buttons, which are defined as top, left, right, and bottom button interactions. As the template is intended to work with gamepad, these buttons represent the face buttons of a gamepad, for example, A, B, X, and Y. The interaction system will send a different message for each button to the focused item, which can then respond to it individually. So far, so good. So you might be wondering, how do interactive items work? It's quite simple. All interactive objects inherit from either BP Master Interactive Object or BP Master Interactive Character based on whether they are using a static or a skeletal mesh. These actors control the main interaction functionality, read their data from the provided table, handle outline, and UI widget visibility. The interaction system can detect them since the meshes are set to object type interactive. Having one of these actors, or child actors of course, in focus will read their data and display the UI widget. Interacting with them will send an interface message to the focused actor which will execute one of the predefined interaction events. Alright, let's talk about how we can set up a specific item. First, let's go to data tables, item data, and there we can see two predefined data tables for items. We have the example room items and the show room items. We don't have to use these, we can use a custom one and that's what we're going to do. So if we hover over it, we see that the world structure is BP item data. So let's right click miscellaneous data table and let's select this BP item data. And let's just say tutorial data. Well, better would be tutorial items. So if we open this up, we have a clean and empty list. Uh, let's click on add. Rename this to example. And now we have a bunch of different things that we can do. We can give the object a name. And what I did to have the localization in place already and to make the localization easier, I didn't type in the names of the objects in here. I added them to the string table. So I had the string tables, interactive items, and there I added the names. So it would be easier for the collection for localization. So I would then go to, I would then select my string table, interactive items, and there I would select, for example, the mark. And then you see it's grayed out and I can't change it because it's just a reference to the string table. But right now, let's just unlink that, type in example item. So there we can select the interaction that we want to have. Since this, let's say we want this to only be something that we can look at. So let's say on our top bottom, we could here again, we could type in look, but since we're using look at multiple places, places it's easier to just say uh, interaction labels look there we go uh, the us camera focus if we want to focus on it when we click on it how long the camera focus should uh, should should hold on um, the dialogue row if we want the player to talk to say anything when we click on it we just keep it leave it empty right now uh, a journal entry if we want to add a journal entry when we click on it um, and then we have more inspection properties. These inspection properties are only used if we have a 3D inspection, if we can rotate the, the item in front of the camera. But well, let's not do that right now. We don't want to enable a pickup. We won't have to clarify inventory data because this item won't be, we won't be able to pick this item up. 
So let's just ignore all of this. So we have the item name, uh, we have the interaction name, the interaction label. Let's go back to the level. Let's go to blueprints, interactive actors. Let's drop in the simple interaction example. And here we can say on the uh, details panel and the object setup, we change this to tutorial items and select example. Great. So now we can go to object. We could change the, the object that we have. Let's say, I want to be Bosch now. Makes no sense. What do we have? Let's take this bowl here. And we can then go to the interaction hot, select it, and move it around like where we want to have this. And as you might have seen, if we go to the actor again, we can say set the arrow direction. So we have up, down, left, and right. And if you click on it, you see that this example image changes. So that's basically where we want to have this facing out. And then we can select the interaction hot again, maybe make it like this. If we now hit play. We probably can't interact with it. And that's a good example because the object, let's go to the object. Let's click on it. And we see that this plate doesn't have collision. So it's very crucial that this mesh that we want to interact with has a proper collision. So in order to, uh, in order for the trace for the interaction system to detect it. So let's play again from here. And there we go. We can detect it. It's called example item as we wanted it. And if I get close, it says look. All right, that's it for this video. In the next one, we're going to talk about dialogues and conversations, as well as level transitioning and streaming.